Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Moments of Meditation on this uh, multi-level format. We are doing a hybrid here of handling worship on Zoom and prayerfully our attendees on our Facebook Live page. I'm Reverend Philip Cousin, and I'm the pastor of St. Andrew's AME Church in Sacramento, California, and we pray that today's broadcast will be a blessing to you as we wish everyone a happy Father's Day. We will begin with a selection by our own Mr. Carlos Fuentes, who will play for us now, Faith of Our Fathers. And after that, the Reverend Dr. Deborah Burroughs will lead us in our prayer and our scripture. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Most gracious and all wise God, we thank you for being the father of all fathers. God, we thank you for how you watch over us, how you continue to bless us, how you keep us in your care. And God, it is not because we deserve it, but it is because of your goodness, your grace, and your mercy that you continue to allow us to be amongst the land of the living. And for that, we say thank you. 
God, we pray your blessings upon this country and upon this world. God, we especially pray your blessings upon those protesters who are out there recognizing that there is such a thing as systemic racism. And God, we pray that you would guide and protect them as they try to make this world a better place. God, we pray your blessings upon the sick and shut in everywhere. God, we pray your blessings upon bereaved families across this land. We pray your blessings upon those persons who have tuned into this broadcast. We thank you, God, that you allow us to draw closer to you because your word tells us that you will contend with us if we contend with you. God, increase our faith. Help us to draw closer to you. Help us to live in this world and as Christians to be the disciples that you have called us to be. Bless us in this worship service. Bless our pastor. Bless our first family. Bless pastors across the land, God, who is preaching the gospel this morning to spread your word virtually because we are the church scattered. We give you all glory. We give you all honor. We give you all praise. This is our prayer. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning is in the Gospel of Luke. I will be reading chapter from chapter 8, verses 40 through 56. That's Luke's Gospel, chapter 8, verses 40 through 40, I'm sorry, 40 through 56. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had only one daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay a-dying. But as he went, the people thronged him. And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her issue of blood staunched. And Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude thronged thee and pressed thee, and sayest thou, who touched me? And Jesus said, somebody hath touched me, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling. And falling down before him, she declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. While he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter and James and John, and the father and the mother of the maiden. And all wept and bewailed her, but he said, Weep not, she is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. And he put them all out and took her by the hand and called, saying, May arise. And her spirit came again, and she arose straightway, and he commanded to give her meat. And her parents were astonished, but he charged them that they should tell no man what was done. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and doers of his red word. 
and amen. We thank you very much for the reading of that scripture, Reverend Burroughs. And now our own Carlos will lead us in another selection. He will bless us with one as we prepare for today's meditation.
I would like to invite your attention to the scripture read in your hearing and at your convenience. Read that passage found in the eighth chapter, of the Gospel of Luke, verses 40 through 56. On this Father's Day, we would have you consider with us a discussion on Jairus. First, a word about the scripture. What we have is a wraparound miracle. For there is a miracle that Jesus performs on his way to performing the miracle concerning Jairus. And that is the healing of the woman with the issue of blood. Our focus is on the story of Jairus. For even the miracle that is the interim miracle reveals to us the patience of this father who had a need of Jesus. Jairus was a father who was concerned for his little girl. He is described as being a ruler of the synagogue, powerful man. But that did not exempt him from the cares of this world. Yes, Jairus was important. He oversaw the daily operations of the synagogue. Jairus was what today we would call a chief operating officer. Jairus arranged the services. He chose who would read the scripture, who would speak, and so forth. Jairus did the clerical duties. In his role, he was well known and much respected in his community. Yes, Jairus was all of these things, but he was also a father. We are not told his daughter's name. She is just referred to as Jairus's daughter. What do you suppose she saw in him? What do you suppose she saw in her father? She had to have seen his prominence in the community, but I wonder if that meant anything to her. I wonder if she thought of her father as being old fashioned and out of touch. Lame, the way many teenage daughters might see their fathers today. But really, what did this daughter see in her father, Jairus? Well, the story tells us without telling us that after this event, she probably never looked at her father the same way again. So I wonder, I would have you to wonder with me for a little while. What new things post sickness unto death did Jairus' daughter see in her father? Well, she had to have seen a father who was not ashamed to seek Jesus. Jairus had probably heard Jesus speak at the synagogue at Capernaum. The scripture tells us in the 41st verse that there came a man. I want you to take notice. Jairus did not come in the dark of night like Nicodemus. Jairus came in the full light of day. And there was a multitude of people, witnesses, all of whom in the light of that day could see this ruler of their synagogue seeking the same Jesus they had come to see. But Jairus did not care what they saw. Jairus had come because his daughter was sick. It is a hard thing for a father, for a parent, 
to see their child suffer in sickness. What did Jairus do? Jairus stepped up without reservation or hesitation and fell down at the feet of Jesus. Jairus teaches us that when you have a need, what matters is not who you are or who folk think you to be. What matters is who Jesus is. I want you to notice as well that Jairus went for himself. He didn't send anybody. He did not send his wife. Jairus did not send one of the other children. Jairus did not even send a servant. Jairus went to see Jesus for himself. There was no shame in his game. Oh, that more fathers would seek Jesus without shame. Our society, family life, is in the mess it is in today, partly because too many fathers look for golf balls instead of Jesus on a Sunday morning. They may dutifully send their wife and kids to church, but what would happen if they, the fathers, went to? You know, children don't miss a thing. The story is told of a little boy who was ready to go to church in Sunday school. As he stepped out the door, he took one more look over at the couch where his father lounged, his favorite libation in one hand and the TV remote control in the other. Dad, the little boy inquired, when you were my age, did you go to church in Sunday school? When I was your age, the father responded, I went every Sunday. His son mumbled, why should I go? A lot of good it did you. What would happen in our world if more fathers sought God on the regular and without reservation? What would happen if more fathers would boldly seek out God for help? What a difference it would make if more fathers would lead their children to Jesus rather than just try to send them. All right. Well, Jairus not only went looking for Jesus, but when Jairus found Jesus, Jairus was not ashamed to bring Jesus home. I want you to hear what I'm saying. Jairus was not ashamed to invite Jesus to his house. The scripture tells us that Jairus begged Jesus to come to his house. Then the scripture conveys to us that as they went, others followed. It seems that Jairus was not only bringing Jesus home, Jairus was bringing a whole crowd with him. This is for the, the fathers out there. Have you ever had occasion to make that difficult call home? Tell your wife, honey, I'm about to bring some friends over. Well, Jairus couldn't make the call and when Jairus got home, he arrived not just with a few friends, but with an entire crowd. But this ruler of the synagogue was not ashamed to bring Jesus to his house. I believe that Jairus was the kind of father who would have stood shoulder to shoulder with Joshua and declared before the children of Israel, I don't know what you're going to do, 
But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. But this is the most important point. This father not only went looking for Jesus, this father was not only unashamed about bringing Jesus to his house. This father had the faith to put the welfare of his child into the hands of Jesus. The story tells us that Jairus had not gotten home before one of his servants came from his house and told him, no need to bother the master. Your daughter is dead. But when Jairus received that news, Rather than dismiss Jesus, he gave his daughter over into the care of Jesus. It did not matter what kind of news came from his house. You see, Jairus had already determined in his heart that he was more willing to listen to Jesus than he was to the report of men. We need more fathers who will trust Jesus like that. Fathers who will trust their children to the Lord. We need more fathers who will lead their children to Jesus by precept and example. Much like Abraham, fathers must be willing to sacrifice their children on the altar of the plan of God and not the altar of their own plan. You see, God has a plan. Jairus did not know what the plan of God was, but clearly scripture reveals it was in the plan of God that Jairus' little 12-year-old daughter should live and be an example of what can come when you trust in the Lord. Jesus is in the midst of this discussion. In verse 50, we are told that Jesus says to Jairus, do not be afraid, only believe. Trust God, your daughter will be made well. Jairus put his daughter completely into the hands of God and into the care of his son, Jesus the Christ. What would happen if more fathers would commit their children into the hands of Jesus? What would happen if more children could see their fathers committing them into the hands of Jesus? Imagine what a better picture that would be in the sight of children of that man that they call father. There's a question before us today, men. What do our children see in us? Do they see in us a father who is not ashamed to seek the Lord? Do they see in us a father who is not ashamed to bring Jesus home? to raise the name of Jesus in the house, to let everyone in the house know that the house belongs to Jesus? Do they see in us a father who is unafraid, able to completely give their household and their children over into the care of God? What do our children see when they look at us? I hope they see a father who prays for them. I hope they see a father who prays over them and knows that in committing them into the care of God, they are placing their children into hands much larger than their own. 
The name Jairus means God will enlighten. I like to believe this morning that when Jairus' daughter looked on her father, she looked upon a man whom God had enlightened. I wonder this morning, also fathers, when our children look at us, do they see that God has enlightened us? If you would be the father or the parent before a child that exemplifies by precept and character what it means to walk with God, you must have a relationship with God. Now, if you do not have that, know that you can have that today. It is as simple as following a little formula given by the Apostle Paul in his letter to the church in Rome, where in the 10th chapter of the 9th verse, Paul says that if you just confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. It is as easy as that. Confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart. Open wide the doors of your living. Invite Jesus in. If you have that kind of relationship, you need a good church home. You need to belong and your family needs to belong to a good Christ-confessing, Bible-believing, fellowship of people of God who are fearfully trying to work out their own soul salvation. I encourage you to do that. And I've done this long enough now until it does not much matter to me about denominational affiliation. What matters is the relationship with God in Christ Jesus. But I tell you this because it's a poor frog that won't praise his own pawn. For me, this way, the church of my choice, the AME church, is the best way to enter into a relationship with God that will last you while you're here and hold you all the way into the hereafter. When we come together again as the church united, for now we are the church scattered. But when we come together again as the church united in Sacramento, that family that calls itself St. Andrews, I want you to know you are invited. You are welcome to come and we will receive you with open arms. We pray that this broadcast has been a blessing to you today. And if it has, please share us with your friends. Share us through your social media. That we might be a blessing to many more. And if you are desirous of making a donation to this ministry, we invite you to find us on Giflify. You can find us on Giflify, St. Andrews, Amy Church, or you can text St. Andrews AMEC to 73256. Follow the directions there. 
and make a contribution. We trust that this day, you have been reminded, oh, how God loves you and me. As has become our custom in these broadcasts, I'm going to ask now if Carlos will take us out by playing for us the selection that has been our theme through this time of trial, and that is the song by Jonathan McReynolds, God is Good. Thank you for spending this time with us today. And we pray, as always, that God will bless you and keep you.
stay safe, stop the spread, socially distance, shelter in place. God bless you and keep you until we come together again. And just before I sign off, happy Father's Day, Daddy. I know you're watching. Everyone be blessed. We will see you next week. This is Reverend Philip Cousin signing off.